Good morning, everybody. I'm, as introduced by Jerry, I'm James O'Donnell. I'm presenting today on behalf of uh, Stephen O'Brien. So this is essentially his uh, master's thesis, which is uh, performed in conjunction with uh, T.J. O'Connor's associates. So essentially, our master's thesis, our project today, is about RFIs. Love them or hate them. They can be a source of uh, enormous anguish or a source of uh, essentially a cash cow for given organisations, depending on your perspective. We want to look at the impact BIM level, um, BIM level 1 uh, would have on um, RFIs in terms of the number of RFIs and the response times to specific RFIs. So please keep that in mind as we move through the presentation today. Okay, so just a little bit of context and motivation here. We know that the uh, BIM adoption rates are uh, on the increase and we can see here a figure of 8% year on year from 2012. That's great and essentially um, that's great for the industry in general. But of the responses, we know to very low um, response rate from engineers and contractors. Also, we know that there is a return on investment from, for using BIM, but the return on investment is not applicable to all uh, project stakeholders, and that's very, very important. So some stakeholders are gaining uh, from the use of BIM, and others are, are losing. So client, um, contractor fees and uh, design fees, etc., should be adjusted accordingly. Which rooms are you looking for Mary, how are you? Very well, Sorry, but for a little bit. Okay, just kicking off. So that's me, so you're good. That's it here? Yep, just a little bit. Thank you. Okay, so the RFI, we know the request for information may arise. For, for a number of reasons, be it um, an inconsistency in design spec, uh, an issue that pops up to, uh, dur during construction, etc., etc. Uh, there's a long list and um, uh, different attempts that have been made in, in literature to characterize and categorize these RFIs and uh, we'll pay particular attention to the work of, uh, of, of Hughes and, and Hannah uh, in, with respect to um, uh, RFI characterization and um, uh, key metrics associated with these RFIs. So there are, t there are two key metrics that are relevant today. So and these have been identified in the literature, as we've seen this is, as we can see here, this was from a couple of years ago. So the percent, first and foremost, the percentage of RFIs answered within the requested time period. So on time RFIs, yes or no, the, num the number of them. And the total number of RFIs per million dollars of contract, uh, of, of a war contract. So very, very important um, uh, metrics. They're high level metrics, and we can take them as a proxy for um, effective collaboration on, on any given project. Okay, so there's a key research gap then that, um, that Stephen identified. And we see here that particularly just, uh, um, at, the, at the end of this uh, state of research gap, we wanted to use the RFIs as a proxy for processing efficiency as a direct use of, um, uh, of BIM on a given project. Okay, so we, we have uh, three interlinked hypotheses. And essentially we're looking to quantify and to, to manage the uh, response times for all our RFIs. Uh, we're looking to, to determine the percentage uh, of on-time versus late responses, and we want to see if BIM has an impact, uh, the use of BIM has an impact on uh, the number of RFIs issued per million euros of award contract. So it's pretty straightforward in terms of what we're trying to achieve, and we want to establish essentially an evidence base that the industry could use and build upon the existing literature uh, from 2012 and 2013. So as we see here, there are a, link, a number of them derived objectives uh, from, uh, from the hypothesis, and we see here we're looking at the, the amount and frequency of RFI submissions, the, we're going to look at the average and median response times, we, we focus a lot on median response time because to, for reasons that you know of, some RFIs may <coughs> take months to respond to, and, they, and certain data can certainly um, skew uh, our, our overall picture, so we're going to work off median response times instead of um, uh, mean. Um, we're going to compare uh, single party and multi party RFIs in terms of quantity and response times, and again look at this uh, uh, n number of RFIs per million euros of contract award. So, the research uh, activities then, um, we, 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 we thought about this for a little while, and we devised the following process uh, essentially, is a research methodology to see <coughs> Stephen deploy it um, when um, conducting his research. So. The, the first stage here at the top is essentially data acquisition, and we're looking at uh, qualitative and quantitative data. So, as people know, with, ex with experience of RFIs are acutely aware, um, the information is not, is not properly structured. 
one organization to the next. We see a lot of, say, no taking by hand. There may be a formal RFI template from one organization to the next, but that, that information is essentially not machine readable and is not in a standardized format, and that's a huge issue, and that will pop up again in a few, a few slides' time. So with the available information, we're going to construct a database. Uh, we're going to look at that database and essentially uh, remove any um, data points that are um, incomplete or unusable um, for, for one reason or another. We have a refined set that's suitable for analysis, perform uh, some rudimentary uh, metric analysis on that, and then we'll validate our results through interviews and discussions with senior members of staff and, and people who have a significant experience in the field to see if, the, if these uh, results uh, hold true and, and, and are valid. So what we looked at here was just a, uh, a three-story office block project of about 20 million euros. Uh, we see the building type, the square foot, the delivery method, uh, etc. So just to give some boundary conditions um, uh, for, for the project, we see here that the, um, uh, the, the, the 3D CAD model has been managed, etc. We see with 26 different stakeholders on the project, uh, regular site meetings and um, there's an online system used to log RFIs, but just note that the RFIs themselves were um, in the PDF format and were supplemented by um, uh, progress reports and meeting minutes uh, shared via the uh, common data environment. Okay, so the data, uh, our data set was as follows for the project. So request for information 68, um, after cleansing the, this uh, drops to 66, so please keep that in mind, we're going to work off a data set of 66 points. And, uh, and the following minutes. So we see that it's semi-structured information. Uh, essentially, we need to interpret free text from meeting minutes, etc., uh, supplementary documents, and so on. So that was essentially Stephen's data set and, and, and what he worked with. So I've preferred or alluded to the fact that a lot of this information has been semi-structured, and we needed to put a, a more formal structure on, on, the, on the information. So Stephen and, and, and I then looked at um, building a, a database, or essentially a spreadsheet, uh, using the following uh, column headers. And so th these are essentially uh, the, the <coughs> metadata we're going to work off for this given, um, for this given project. So uh, of note here, um, um, we are going to use uh, the, character the, the um, characteristics of single party or multi party RFI. <laughs> we also have a uh, um, response time. It's very, very important that this is noted and, and, and quantified. And we also need to. Um, uh, we also devise a late category, so essentially just one, two, um, uh, uh, two weeks to four weeks late, and uh, greater than a month late. Um, so essentially, Stephen then um, trolled through the, um, the RFIs and all the other documentation and, and populated the, the, the rows then in the spreadsheet um, under these particular headings, and, uh, and essentially uh, um, created his data set. We then was able to filter and process that data set accordingly. So, getting to the results now, well, what he found. So, as I said, that figure 68 dropped to 66 RFIs. And, uh, um, and 50, what we noticed straight away is that 59% of, of all RFIs were issued within the four months, first four months of, of, uh, um, of the project. Okay, punctuality, very, very important. So, we see here straight, straight away, we have uh, all our RFIs on the left. Uh, so percentage on time uh, against, uh, against late, we single party and multi party. We felt that this uh, differentiation was very, very important. So the figures then just for themselves, so 55% of the single party RFIs were on time, um, as opposed to 30% of the multi party um, RFIs were on time. So 55, 30 against 45 and 70 respectively. Okay, so uh, pr pretty straightforward. Um, then, in terms of median response times, I said again we're going for the median, uh, the median response time as opposed to mean response time. Um, just uh, outliers can, um, can can really pl play with the data, can skew the data in undesired ways. So, take the median response time 15 days. So, we notice that the median is four days later than what is uh, uh, the, the median uh, given time for single party RFIs. And in terms of multi party RFIs, we see that the median is two day, 2.5 days uh, later than the, the, the given time. So um, just important to note, to, to, to note these. The key metrics we talked about earlier from HANA and, um, uh, 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 and, the, and, uh, and Hughes, um, uh, we see significant improvements here. So for example, we have 3.3 uh, uh, RFIs per million euro of contract award, whereas the, uh, the industry norm is established back in 2013 was 17.2 per million dollars. I know the units aren't exactly the same, but they are certainly comparable. So that's a, that's a massive improvement uh, tr through the use of uh, uh, BIM Level 1 on, on a given project. 
Um, so uh, we also see here that um, three percent of RFIs, so then going from 68 to 66, three percent of the RFIs were not responded to, um, and that's a, that's a significant improvement again, as opposed to 22 percent for the the industry norm established in that uh, previous paper. Okay, um, so uh, big big improvements there. Uh, that's out of place. Uh, okay, so key key findings. So um, Stephen was new to the um, construction industry, and he was certainly um, uh, shocked to learn that there are certain courses available for people who want to abuse the RFI system. And um, he found that it, it is a mechanism for um, um, uh, for increased revenue streams from certain stakeholders w within the construction the construction process or the design build uh, uh, operate chain, and, um, and and that's something that um, ca can be. Tailored according to stakeholder needs and may not be the, may, may not be in the best uh, best best use of the uh, the overall goals. Um, um, additionally, um, we we noticed that with greater system integration and and, and, and collaboration, that we, we can see significant uh, decreases in the number of RFIs. So I mentioned earlier that not all stakeholders benefit equally. Um, with a lot of say clash detection and similar activities taking place during the earlier stages of, of, of design and, and through the design process, we're eliminating a lot of the issues that pop up on site. So yes, we can um, we can address a lot of the RFIs earlier at, at, at a lower cost, and that, that's that's that, that's really really encouraged and, and massively beneficial. So also if we, t if we take very prescriptive approaches to design, just design to, to spec without considering, um, which we are going to do not naturally, but without collaborating and kind of have that extra layer of collaboration, we can, we can sometimes miss opportunities. So it's just a, that's a little a softer point that, that needs to be accounted for in, in, in different ways. Okay, so my, my final slide here is kind of the recommendations and, and, and future work. So I mentioned that the RFI structure was, um, in fact, not really that well structured. Um, in, in the case of the, the project at TJ's, they had a, a template which was great and very easy to use if the, if the template was completed rigorously on each occasion. But um, I, I also talked to um, um, some colleagues and some uh, people at the Royal Bank headquarters in, um, in Holland, and they were really insisting on if the information that's currently in PDFs is considered to be non-machine readable, so human readable only. Instead, if we move to a case where we use forms, and say online forms or um, uh, da database forms, to complete RFIs, that information is then immediately machine readable and becomes part of a system that can be controlled, managed and queried um, in line with the organization's needs. So if, an RF if a standardized RFI was available and made, made, and made available um, in machine readable format, we could have significant gains in terms of RFI processing, um, particularly where there are high value items at stake. I think this is where the, uh, the role of the project information manager can come about. So based on what I've seen, I mean essentially, um, the, uh, you could set up a Google form in a matter of an hour to, to match what, say, um, the, the, the uh, PDF templates that were in place, and you would have that information in the spreadsheet automatically. It would be very easy to do that, but again, does it fit with the goals and, and, the, and the other processes um, within the organization? So that kind of wraps me up. There's a lot of work to do. This is, this, these are the findings of uh, one project. I think we need to um, extend this to a range of projects uh, over one organization and then further extend it out to a range of projects across the industry in general. It would be, be an interesting challenge to attain all of that information under GDPR and so on and, and competitive uh, uh, IP, etc. But I think um, that type of finding would be enormously beneficial for the industry in general. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thanks.